Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. It's time for another episode of Wicked 101. Where you at, motherfuckers? Welcome back. It's your boy, Defect. And I got a great, fucking awesome special guest for you guys tonight. He goes by Sutter Kane. If you don't know about Sutter Kane, he is the ghetto metal king. Never so deep records, man. We're about to get hip to him tonight. If you don't know what's up, it's it's going down. Two weeks ago, we tried to have him on. Technical difficulties, my bad. But I think we got all that shit worked out. Um, so uh, this uh, so this is what we're gonna do, man. Um, I'm gonna play uh, a video for my man. Um, and then uh, I think we're gonna be able to get him on the line. I, I hear he's about ready. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play his video uh, and then we're gonna talk to the man himself, man, without further ado. So uh, this is Dark Midnight off his new record, Dark Midnight. So here we go. What up, man? How you doing tonight? Yo, peace was good, my Nick. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. I can hear you really fine. You can hear me. We finally you got this thing me. up and running now, huh? Oh my God, man! Let me tell you, it was a nightmare, man. Cause, uh, yeah, it was it was crazy, man. I had all kinds of technical difficulties that night. I don't think it was meant to be that night. And uh, no, nah, I don't think so either, man. Cause I was at the gym and I totally <laughs> forgot it was at six o'clock. Right. And everything, y'all. I was getting my swole on so I could take my shirt off on stage. My man and was out there you know crushing saying? weights. He's supposed to be doing an interview. Yeah, he you ran know what home I'm for real. And then Crush, right, crushing weights and taking the juice. And then right the juice. before I brought him live, the everything crashed. I couldn't get the stream back up, but. I, uh, I, I had to format my goddamn computer, reinstall all the software. It was a nightmare. Up to, it turned out it was a piece of RAM that was bad, and it was fucking. Oh, for real? Out. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. must have a PC. No, it was a Mac. It's a no Mac. shit. It's a dope Mac. Yeah, Mac. But, well, uh, they do get their shit in China, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what's going on tonight, man? Are you, uh, you got, uh, you got a lot to talk about tonight, huh? Yeah, man. Shoot, I'm in the studio now, literally, bro, and stuff. Man, I've been up. Uh, since yesterday, mixing uh, this new Donnie Darko album and everything. We're finally almost done with it. We got like five more tracks of production, but uh, the songs that I have now, I'm just going to go ahead and start mixing and getting all that done and everything, man. But yeah, it's been producing, 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 man. I know niggas have been asking like, yo, when you going to come out with your album? It's coming, yo. It's coming. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. everything is definitely coming and everything. For right now, though, I'm, um, I just dropped that Apollo Valdez album that Dark Midnight album, and uh, it did good, man. I liked that album a lot. It was a really dope album. And after that, I wanted to follow up with the Donnie Darko album and then have mine by wintertime. I can't release my music in the summer, man. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not a summer person. Like, I hate the summer. What's wrong with the summer? It's too fucking hot, man. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of dark music can you make in the summertime? Like, for real. I like, think about it. I, really. I can like, feel what you. What kind of dark music do you make in the summertime? I mean, I feel you. Like, what can you complain about in the summer besides the heat? You want to make a whole album about the heat? I guess you're right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm the type of nigga who could live in Eastern Europe and never come back and be fine with that. Right. And stuff, yo, for real. Like, I need, like, I need the, the clouds and the cold weather. Like, this heat shit ain't for me, bro. Like, I can never live on a tropical island. Like, I'll be miserable. But you're you're from New York, though, right? So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a, to exactly. some degree, it's always cold out there, though. Right? Basically. And it's always cold out there, definitely, man. And stuff I for mean, real, I'm, but... I, I'm not far away. I'm in Michigan, so the weather changes every five minutes here, so... You know. What's the weather like there now? Right now, it's great. It's uh, 75 degrees and sunny, partly cloudy. Uh, so you must be like a you must be a summer person because you said you said it really happy just now. <laughs> well, you 75 like, isn't really that hot. Like you know, you go to Cali, you, you get up to the the hundreds like every day for for weeks and weeks. That I can't handle that. But 75, that I, hate I, Cali, I can handle. Man. I mean, I used to live in Cali, man. Cali's oh gosh, and so I couldn't get into that shit and stuff, yo, for real. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, you, I'm down with the winter, too. I just don't like driving in the winter, you know, like, yeah, you get the roads to get all fucked up, you know. But if it wasn't for no, that, I'm, I'm you, down. Man. I'm down with the winter other than that. No, I totally feel you, man. That's stuff for real, dude. I totally feel you. How you been, though? Pretty good? Man, working, you know, between uh, I, I spent the last two weeks getting this rig back up so we could do this tonight. I mean, it, it's been a lot nice. of work. Well, I appreciate it. In the middle of mixing it. mixing a project or two, I got a couple of projects I'm mixing and engineering myself, so I stay on the grind, too, man. 
but you I didn't know. know you mix and engineer. No shit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I rap, I engineer, I mix, I do, I do all kinds. Of, I'm, I'm a behind the scenes guy and I'm a stage guy. So I'm. Damn, I'm, that's I'm, what's up, man. I'm, I'm, always, yeah. I'm always grinding, man. We, you know, what's funny, man, is like, I've seen your name for years and years and years and years, right? But and we, we know a lot of the same people, but me and you have never crossed paths before this wicked one on one thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of interesting because I, I know a lot of the people you fuck with, like Psycho and Lex and, and yeah. McNasty and, uh, I, you know, a lot of people that you've worked with. But we, we never really crossed paths like that. So this is going to be cool, man. Um, but I got to be honest with you, man. You know, like I, I've seen you grinding and doing your thing. But until you were going to be a guest on here, I didn't I didn't really know your music that well. So I've been like exploring your catalog for like two months now. And I feel like I've barely scratched the surface because there's so much going on there. And uh, and I, I got to say that I'm a fan now, you know, but uh, before I, you know, I, I I didn't really know your shit that well, you know, so um, this is going to be cool. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student in my own class, man. You know, this Wicked 101, it's class. Yeah, about, it's about learning the history. And I love the history of the Wicked shit and uh, hip hop in general. And I love learning about it. So... Tonight you're gonna school me, man. Um, so uh, with that, man, like being about the history and stuff, uh, take take us back, man. What got you into into music? And uh, uh, let's start when you were a baby, Sutter Kane. Um, what got me into music? Um, seeing crackheads walk down the block got me into music and everything. Crack crack cocaine got me into music and stuff. Seeing that, you know what I'm saying, it inspired me to make some hard shit and be like, you know, I'm gonna make some hard music and make this shit pop you know what i'm saying but no that's not really how it happened man. <laughs> and so that's not really how it i happened. feel like there's more to the and story so, there you feel what i'm saying and stuff so i got inspired by uh by water roaches but no freaking um uh yo man i just always like music man i've always been into music uh i was more of a metalhead growing up than a rapper i, I never like growing up i never was into rap like that like you feel what i'm trying to say i didn't get into rap until like junior high school i would say i got i think the first rap album i bought was a easy a easy e album i think it was the one where he was dissing dre and stuff yeah that's when i got into rap you know what i'm saying but before then it was like hardcore metal man like i was a super metal head before then you know what i'm saying like faith no more um oh man tons of bands man off the top of my head like tons man so i was more into metal and then i got into uh hip-hop around like i said junior high school i got into hip-hop and then once I heard Wu-Tang, it was over with. You feel what I'm trying to say? I thought I was like, oh my gosh, like this is the dopest shit I've ever heard. So I got heavy into hip hop from there. And then I started DJing. I, want, I didn't want to be a producer. I didn't want to be a rapper. I didn't want to be none of that shit. All I want to do is fucking DJ and be a battle DJ. I just wanted to go and battle people. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like DMCs and stuff like that. Like Rock Raider, uh, the Executioners, like Rob Swift, like shit like that. That's all I wanted to do. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And then later on, my dad is the one who got me into production. And stuff. He said, um, why play somebody else's record when you can make your own? So, you know what I'm saying? So he, he, I got an MPC, and uh, if people don't know what MPC is, y'all definitely need to uh, look that up. You feel what I'm saying? So I got an MPC, which is a drum machine by Roger Lynn. Um, it was the most complicated piece of gear I've ever seen in my fucking life. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like, I let it sit in my room for like six months, yo. Like, I did not know how to use that shit. Just let it everything. sit there like, collecting the dust. Dude, it was it was fucking complicated, man. Like I've never, like I didn't want to do this shit, man. Like honestly, I just wanted to just DJ. That's all I wanted to do is fucking DJ. I wanted to, my main goal was to be on the radio and DJ. That's it. That's all I wanted to do was DJ and learn all the new scratches. Like you feel what I'm saying? So when I got the MP, I uh, let it sit for six months, and then um, and then I started using it, man. I started running drum breaks through it, learning how to loop, and then I uh, started when I started using it for a while. I would just take loops and just loop it, loop it, loop it. And then uh, I had a group at that time. It was me and my homeboy, Usman. And uh, we would make like four track demos and stuff, yo. He's the one who actually gave my name Bless and everything. He's the one who came out with my name DJ Bless, believe it or not, and stuff, yo. We went to school together. And uh, he came out with the name. And then uh, it was me, him, and this nigga named Antoine. We had a group, some bullshit group and everything. We did like a lot of four track demos. But in the neighborhood, I thought, I thought we thought we were the man, like seriously. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, when you come out with your first demo tape or your first cassette tape, back then it was cassette tapes, you know what I'm saying? Right. When you come out with your first cassette tape and niggas hearing that shit, yo, you think you, like, fucking on top of the world when in reality, nigga, you just only nigga on the block. Right. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So, <laughs> right. you ain't known on your block. Right. That's it. So, long story short, I did all that. I learned how to produce. 
And then that's when it started to pop off, yo. Like, uh, I'd say I was like 17. I ran into a guy named Apollo Valdez. And that's the dude who uh, you just played just now, the Apollo Valdez joint. Right. Me and Apollo went to school together and stuff, yo. And um, he had a group called Seven Signs. And that was the first real group I've ever produced. Like the first real group where we like actually went to a studio, recorded it and put it out. You feel what I'm saying? And he used to play on the radio all the time. And mind you, at that time I had a radio show popping. So I used to DJ two on the radio at like 16, 17. You feel what I'm saying? So I took it from there. And then uh, I met another dude later on named Infinity, uh, the ghetto child. Uh, we had a song called Throw Your Fingers Up. I had to be like 18 at that time. That song was a huge radio hit, like big. Then I got signed to MCA. I had a big, gigantic deal over at MCA, like a huge deal. They looked at me as like a production prodigy. So I had a big deal over there at MCA. Then uh, what happened after that? You were, that, was, then, that, um, that, that, that was from MCA. Then after that, I went to produce Little Kim over at Capitol. Hold on, can you still hear me? Stan, thank you. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. I was going to say that that was all production. Like that wasn't. Um... That no, wasn't... this ain't rapping. We're still, we're still in the production phase right now. Right, right. We ain't getting into the rapping yet. Right. Now, this is all production. I didn't start rapping until like 2004, 2005 and stuff, yo, like for real. Like Black Sunday. Niggas who know me, you know what I'm saying, who followed the Black Sunday trilogy, that's when it started. But I got to lead up to that. So from there, I went to production. I produced Little Cam. I went to Atlantic. I used to work for Atlantic. And then I worked at Capitol. I produced stuff over there. And then that's when the light bulb kicked on to say, okay, you know what? I'm producing all these records for everybody else. Why the fuck am I doing my own shit for me? And then that's when me and Darko, I ran into Darko. I met him. And then, uh, yeah, man, we started the whole Black Sunday thing, man. The first album was uh, Black Sunday. Then after that was the world famous August Underground that everybody knows and asks me for to this day. And then that's how we started the whole ghetto metal thing, man. And ever since then, I mean, it's 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 always kind of had the, the metal influence, right? Even from the beginning. Yeah, ever since then, it's had the metal influence, man. Because what I looked at it as... Um, I grew up on metal, so basically I would hear breaks in the beats in the metal songs and be like, damn, I can like chop that up right there. You feel what I'm saying? So I took the same theory as people do with hip hop and find the break and take that, chop it up, and then rap over it. Like, you feel what I'm saying? And it, it took off wonderfully. Right. And everything, you know, for real. And I put it to this way, man. I have so many classic albums to this day. You got to figure, I have August Underground, I have Black Sunday, I have Cycle to Snuff Reels. I have um, Emotional Disorder. I have Anxiety Theory. I mean, these are classic albums that sell for over like two or three hundred dollars on eBay. Like, right. I have classic fucking albums. It's like, you feel what I'm saying? Right. All from production and all from rapping and everything, you know, and there's mad other stuff that I produce that people don't even know I produced. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So I'm a producer first, rapper second. You feel what I'm saying? I just so happen to know how to rap and everything, but I'm a producer first. And you have a lot of credential. I was just kind of, I mean, just a quick look at your Wikipedia. <laughs> like, it, it, it's, exactly. like it's, got, it's got some crazy names. Kanye West, Scott Stortz, uh, Sean Combs, Swiss Beats, Sean Money, Rick Rubin, R. Kelly, Lil' Kim, like you said, Mystical. I mean, these are some big names, dude. Like, how... Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. No, definitely. My production, my production world is fucking huge. That's why the whole point, that's why I'm so busy all the time. I'm always producing. Like, I got a situation right now that I can't speak on that's going to be big. Like, I can't yeah. talk about it yet until August. August, I could talk about it. But right now, I can't say a word about it. It's all production. But this is going to take my career to... This situation is going to take my career to a whole nother realm to where I'm in a class of my own. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? And so, yeah, like, it's big. So, the whole point is, I still keep it real with the underground cats, but I still do my thing with the industry cats. Because I look at it this way, man. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I've dealt in both worlds. I've dealt in the mainstream world, and I've dealt in the underground world. Yo, you have your phonies and fakes in both. It's all about oh, for what sure. you, as a, as a producer, rapper, engineer, do with your own work. You feel what I'm saying? Because I've been in the underground to where it's just a bunch of kids or a bunch of rappers who are just mad because they didn't make it in the mainstream. Then you have the mainstream who just can't fucking rap worth a shit and they just like puppets. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So it's all about what you do as a producer, rapper, engineer, whatever. You feel what I'm saying? We're in the age of 2019 to where you can make your own way. You don't need no underground. You don't need no mainstream. You just need your talent and you. You right. know what I'm trying to say? And then you make your own way. And that's the motto I've always had since 2005. I took a chance even do this underground shit to be with like you know what i'm saying to do some hard shit and it's something that i personally wanted to do and everything i got tired of the industry cookie cutter bullshit and how they tried to like maneuver people with my talent to make them do what they wanted to do not what i wanted to do like, right you know what i'm trying to say so it was a chance taken here 
and everything, yo, for real. And like I said, man, it's just what you do with it and, you know, how you how far you want to go with it. For sure. And, and the, so I get I get the vibe that, like, the the production aspect is your job and the rapping is, I don't want to call it a, a, a hobby, but it's secondary to, like, in terms of your what your the moves that you're making and everything right like yeah i would say so i mean there's nothing wrong with that i would say so i put it this way yo niggas can't fuck with me when it comes to rapping and stuff like i want to be real with you like you feel what i'm saying like i'm yeah. still one of the best underground even some of these mainstream niggas i can out rap but that's not my main focus my main focus is production and to, and to be honest with you nobody's fucking me with that either right like, you get what i'm trying to say so it's like i kind of control both realms and everything yo but my main focus once again is i just love producing like i really do man rapping is dope don't get me wrong like you know what i'm saying like you got darko you got apollo valdez you got a lot psycho cycles to me is one of the, to me my favorite rapper is mcnasty hands down that's one of my favorite rappers ever and stuff is mcnasty and um also a Psycho's good, dope. a good dude too yeah mcnasty's cool as shit he's one of my favorite rappers cycles one of the best like to ever do it point blank period darko oh, was one sure. of the elite you feel what I'm trying to say? Darko was one of the elite. Apollo was one of the elite. So these are dope guys who rap, and this is what they do. Like, they study this rap shit. You feel what I'm saying? Me, right. personally, I feel like I'm a guest in their world. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? Right. When it comes to production, everybody else is just a visitor in my world. Like, you feel what I'm right. saying? They're guests in my world, but that's right. my thing. You feel what I'm saying? So right. that's what I'm saying is that even though I feel like I'm one of the best rappers, I don't, like, boast to brag about it because that's not my world. That's these guys' world. You feel what I'm trying to say? I just do what I do. But production, psh, nah, niggas ain't fucking with me. I'm gonna be real with you. And so niggas ain't niggas can't even come close to me. And I gotta say, you know, I follow your social media and everything. And uh, one thing that really sticks out to me is you you, uh, you post a lot about equipment and uh, the stuff that you use. And I'm a gearhead, man. And you got you got dude, some. Dude, I'm cool... so glad you are. <laughs> dude, glad you are. I just I'm like you're posting all this dope shit. I'm like, what? Well, how, how does he afford all this shit? He's got you got it. There's had to have a hit record. That allowed you to, to, to do that because you got some dope, dope <laughs> shit, bro. And uh, thank you, man. I only have a fraction of that dope shit and uh, a small, small fraction. Um, but what do you, uh, if if you can, let's talk about gear for a minute, man. Like, what are you? I did. I would love to talk about gear. We could talk for the next hour about gear. Oh, oh this is where I get happy. At. Dope, <laughs> I'm down dope. for that. So, so what are you using, man? You, you got, I mean, you got uh, your your rack. I mean, it, it looks like it's. I mean, it's filled with gold mines, dude. Like, what what, what are your no, secret it. weapons, man? Okay, check this out. When it comes to the gear, man, <laughs> I'm going to start doing videos on uh, what, for what people, I'm going to start doing videos on what to purchase. Like, that's coming up really soon. Actually, it's probably starting tomorrow. I'm going to start doing videos on what to purchase because a lot of people, like you said, like, they see the gear, but they okay, what are you using and how would it incorporate to what I'm doing? So what I'm going to start doing is showing, okay, yo, if you're a rapper, and you trying to engineer your own shit, buy this piece here mixed with this piece. And to show an example, I did a record on these pieces already that you probably love, and this is how I did it. Like, you feel what I'm trying to say? And this right. is the pieces I use. So this way you're not just playing trial and error because when I was coming up, I had to do a lot of trial and error on what's good, what's not good. And unless you got like um, $50 million sitting in the bank, you can't buy everything at one time and try it all out. Like you have to kind of go in increments. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like I have a friend of mine oh, yeah. who yeah. has like every piece of gear known to man, but you feel what I'm trying to say? He can do that. Like he can buy everything at one time and try it all out. Me personally, You've been I building just like it up. buy yeah, I like to build it up and, and get in increments and see what's good and what's not good. You feel what I'm saying? So uh, us um, mortals got to do it that way. That's what I'm saying for real, yo. Unless, like I said, unless you just got a shitload of money to blow, then I say buy everything and just fucking try it out and see what you like. But me, I'm gonna start guiding people like how I wanted to be guided on the gear and say, okay, yo, if you're trying to do this, this is how I do it. If you like my music, this is how I do it. And this is the gear that I use to do it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Like right now, like um, I'm really heavy into the uh, Rupert Neve stuff, uh, the West Audio stuff. Um, who else is really good? BAE is really good. There's a couple of companies that's good, man. But um, it's all about what you personally want to know, man. Like, for instance, like even my drum machine collection, man. Like, um, I'm heavy into the NPCs. Like, I have all the NPCs. I have an SP1200. Um, like, I've got some shit, man. But like I said, man, it's all about giving the viewer what they what fits for them and everything right. you feel what i'm saying right hey i don't want to uh cut you off for a second but your uh your video feed is like turning white or something you got like 
a lot of light no in shit. there or something. It's weird because no, uh -oh. it, it's almost like if you move in front of the if you if you were to just go like this, like it would it feels like it would re yeah. See, I don't know if it's like if you don't move a certain aspect, it, it gets fucked up. I don't know. It's weird. Okay, how about now? Oh, you're perfect now. You're perfect now. Okay, like, I turned that light off just now. Okay, that that might have helped a little bit, but yeah, you're. Look at perfect. that man, it's so smart. Hey, I don't know. It just seemed like when you were moving, like it would like wash the screen off. And, oh, and, okay. And, and and when you the parts of you that weren't moving were just getting whiter and whiter and whiter. Anyways, it's fixed now. Um, so drum machines, man. Uh, what is the one that you like? If you were stranded on a desert island, what is? The, give me like a drum machine, a microphone, and a preamp that you would have to you would have to have with you. I would go with the uh, my favorite, the MPC 1000. That's what I did August Underground on. That's what I did Cycle the Snuff Reels on. I did everything from August Underground on on the MPC 1000. So I would go with the MPC 1000. A microphone, I would go with um, uh, probably like a SM7B or what you got right there. That's sure, Mike. You got a um. Nah, this is, is just sure... this is just some bullshit. This is uh, a no shit. That's not, I thought that was a sure mic. Nah, it's a you digital sure a sure mic. No, no, it's a it's a digital reference like fifty dollar uh, special. Works oh, good well, for the live stream. Just you know? like that. It's called a Shore mic. You can go with a Shore mic. Uh, I forgot which one that is. It's the most deaf mic and stuff. It's like a hundred bucks, but it's a really good ass mic. It's probably SM58. Uh, yeah, SM58. That's yeah. what you would go. I would go to SM58. Told you I'm a gearhead, or, man. I, there you go, man. Yeah. yeah, I would go with an SM58 or SM7B. And the reason why I would go with those mics is because they're dynamic mics. If you're on a desert island, you don't have no fucking studio treatment. So that means that you're gonna be catching all the goddamn air and wind. You feel what I'm trying to say? So I, I, I love that you. Mic. I thought I love that you thought about it from a practical standpoint. You were just like, I'm gonna pick the best mic that I know. You're like, it's gonna be more practical to have a dynamic bike on a, on a desert island. Yeah, I, I love that. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So I totally the, you feel don't want, it. Yeah, because you want the direct, you want the dynamic to be focused on you, not the damn wind and whatever else is around. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would go with the 1000. Uh, preamp wise, man, if you have electricity, I would go with a, a, a 6176, which is the UA one I thought was really good. The Universal Audio 6176, which you have the 610 2 preamp, and then you have the 1176 compressor on the right side. Yeah, and I think you're more than fine with that. And then, uh, I get, get a MacBook and Logic, and then you're ready to go. Fuck Pro Tools, I don't use Pro Tools no more either. For all y'all who use Pro Tools, quit that shit and, and delete it and just use Logic or something else. Pro Tools is a complete ripoff. Why do you say that? Because just, think just about the, it, man. Uh, the Tools, annual fee or whatever they do? Yeah, Pro Tools charges you monthly. They're late on all their updates. Um, and if a person like me who has a lot of gear, what they do is, they I'm gonna tell you straight up, they charge people like me um what is it you have to buy their equipment which is going to run you about twenty five hundred dollars and then you have to pay like a thousand dollars for the first year and then every annual i think is four hundred dollars like fuck that i can pay two hundred dollars for logic and be happy and have right. all the same features right yeah i mean logic gets it done you know yeah i've, I've always been a pro tools logic. guy i mean that's what i you know that's what i've always used but uh but yeah logic will get the job done for sure yeah, no, for sure, man. Like, uh, I've been using Pro Tools forever, man, for like over over 15 years. But uh, this year, I switched over to Logic, man. I was like, I'm done with this shit, man, for real. But speaking on gear, man, I got these new EQs and uh, dope shit. These uh, Rupert Nee 551s. Yeah, I see I've been that. using those on vocals, man. I seen you showing those off on uh, online. Um, yeah. What uh, What are you using as an interface to, to handle all that outboard gear? Because you gotta. I mean, if you're if you're are you are you tracking on the computer and then sending it back out to mix and then bring it back in or what do you what's what's the process? Yeah, basically what I'm doing is um, I have my Focusrite Claret. Which people laugh at because it's a focus right but i've been a focus right head since the 90s i mean you know honestly I'm to say? honestly in terms of like the inexpensive interfaces they're the best ones in my opinion you know i'm gonna be honest with you man i've had i've had the top of the line ones and they're cool but i mean to be honest with you the, the guy who buys your record does he say hey man you know he used this top of the line fucking uh preamp i'm not preamp but top of the line interface you know what i'm saying like he more cares about the sound and how, how the warmth of it sounds and stuff, not the damn interface. Right. So um, I use a Focusrite interface claret, which I copped uh, probably about four years ago, five years ago. And I uh, what I usually do is I run everything from my NPC into the gear and I, and I, hold on a second, the fuck? I run everything from the NPC into the gear. What the fuck, this damn Siri, yo, fuck Siri, Siri keeps on popping up. <laughs> 
So, yeah, it's weird shit, man. So, drum machine into the gear. I EQ everything with the gear. You feel what I'm saying? To get the sound that I want. Like, it's an old school 90s trick. So, I EQ everything, get the sound I want, and then I track it into Logic. And then once it's in there on my mix bus, that's when I run everything out. Like, to uh, like my two leaves, uh, to my West Audio uh, bus compressor and EQ. And then that's how I tailor the sound. You feel what I'm saying? But the whole texture... Is already tracked through the gear inside the computer, so this way I don't have to go back to the gear no more. Got you, got you. So you're not you're not using like analog summing or anything like that. No, I don't do the summing mixer thing, man. I'm gonna try it sooner or later, man. I got a company that wants to um, send me one and check out, uh, so I'm gonna do it sooner or later. Tell them to send me one. <laughs> Tell them to send me one for real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I'm out here grinding. I I, I deserve a summing mixer. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yo, believe it or not, I heard some mixes of snake oil, man. I heard a lot of people say that. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, though, but like I can't speak on it because I haven't tried it yet. But in in my case, man, if you got already got gear, man, you probably don't need a summing mixer. And if you do want to get a summing mixer, the ones that I recommend, but I haven't used it, but I just seen the good reviews and I've heard some good things about it. Is like the Phoenix Audio one I heard is really good. Um, the SSL one is good if you're willing to pay the SSL money. That one is good. Um, and those are the two off the top of my head. I thought the dangerous one I heard was clean. I heard there's no texture, no sound, so it was just right. basically the space. Right. I heard the dangerous one is real clean. That's kind of their thing, though. You know, like if you're just looking yeah. for clean, that's, you know. Yeah, definitely, man. I would check out the West Audio one, though, man. West Audio got one coming out uh, in August. They got an interface that they're coming out with, and they have a, a machine called a Titan. And what you can do is take all the EQs and put it in one rack, and then somehow the, the uh, converter sums everything to each thing without using like a whole bunch of chords and stuff. It's like one wire. Right, right. Yeah, so they got that coming out. And you're probably gonna get it. <laughs> I probably will get it. I probably am gonna get it. Yo, if you, see me, if you see me post about it, then yeah, it's gonna probably have, but right now, I'm gonna tell you my goal, man. God willing, this is my goal. I want to get another 500 series rack full of the 551 EQs for vocals. Like those Neve EQs, those 551s, those things on vocals sound amazing. Yeah. So I want to pick up another rack and just fill it up with those. You feel what I'm saying? And rock those for vocals. But to, tomorrow or tonight, I'm going to be making beats. So I'm going to be posting stuff about drums. That's what everybody wants to know about me. Like, okay, how do you get your drums to knock? Like, right. So I'm going to be posting about that and what I use and stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And I'll I use a Poltec for that. Are you putting that yeah, on man, Facebook put, or what? Yeah, I'll put it on Instagram and Facebook, yeah. I'm on okay. both, man, but I'm heavy. I'm more heavy on Instagram than anything and stuff, yeah. I'm on both, but uh, I'm more heavy on Instagram and everything. I like the whole one-minute thing. I can get everything done in, like, one minute. I'll have to make, like, a seven-minute video. Right. Or, or do like I'm doing and have a whole show and take up an hour and a half, you know? Nah, man, I love the show part. You know what I'm saying? We giving some dope information. We should be paying these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, they should be paying us for this goddamn information. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, no all this damn information we giving. You kidding me? Oh and man. Stuff, yo, for real. Niggas be trying to get tutorials on how to uh, <laughs> how to get this popping and stuff. Yo, these master classes. And speaking of master class, I got a dope master class coming out. Not knocking master classes. Okay. Not. I'm not knocking mine. I'm knocking everybody else's, but not mine. Handsome Audio, June 30th in Raleigh, North Carolina. I will be there, and I think Darko will be there with me. Uh, we'll be there. I got a master class showing um, how I mix, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, endorsed by this beautiful company, uh, Handsome Audio. Nice. They got this thing called the Zulu, which is a tape emulator. It emulates two-inch tape and uh, I think quarter-inch tape, too. So I'm going to be showing how I use this thing with my beats and um, how I mix with it. So... It's a big thing they got a big uh, handsome audio masterclass to throw in uh, June 30th. And if you come out there, let me know. I have t-shirts and everything, man. We'll be giving away, signing autographs, taking pictures with babies. You know what I'm saying? Don't bring your girl because I can't promise she'll come back to you <laughs> and stuff, yo. So right. wanting you ahead of time. <laughs> right. Well, look, you, know what I'm saying? You, you should you should live stream that. Like I, I want to watch yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. But... No, I am gonna live stream that and stuff. Nice. Like, Damn, is it doing that white thing again? It is. Just kind of do like one of these. I think that'll. Hold on a second. <laughs> it's weird. Now we're in the fucking dark. Yeah, it's it's. I, I think if you just wave your hand around, the, the other side. Yeah, that's weird, man. The other side. Huh? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that is okay. weird. Oh yeah, there it goes. I don't, it's like I, wiping it's, it away. It's, yeah, it's probably the. It's probably the. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? So now, nah, June 30th in Raleigh, North Carolina, man. I'll be there. Um, 
showing this off with the beautiful people of Handsome Audio. There's another producer that's going to be out there too and everything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to like give an elaborate setup on how he does stuff. I know he does um, tutorials and stuff, yo, and everything like that. I'm not really a tutorial guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm more of a, I'm making the beat to put it out to put it on iTunes type thing more than tutorials. Right. Like, you know right. what I'm trying to say? Like, so. I, I'm not really like, you know, okay, yo, we have to do it this way to this way. I'm just like, my nigga, this is how I do it and get my sound. If you like it, <laughs> high five. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're welcome to take what you've, what I've said and, and incorporate it into what you're doing. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But, so that's how we rock it. But yeah, the beautiful people of uh, Handsome Audio, yo, for all you producers that want that that two-inch tape sound and stuff, yo, this is the piece right here, man. Good on This shit knocks on drums too, man. On drums and vocals, I uh, this thing is good, man. It makes it like a hundred dollar mic sound like a damn thousand dollar mic. I'll have to and check so that, that out. Dope. Yeah, it's called Zulu, man. It's, it's kind of dope, man. It's, it's kind of a more boutique uh brand, isn't it? Yeah, it's boutique. Well, all okay, check out once again. We're in 2019, a lot of these companies are boutique. West Audio's boutique, um, their boutique, BAE's boutique. The only top brands, as far as you got to think of it like record companies, the only top brands that's out. Is Universal Audio, Manly, and Focusrite. I think that's it. Maybe SPL, but everybody else is considered boutique nowadays, man. We're in like the plug-in era, so right, people right. buying gear is like, you know, what I'm saying that's like a uh, a side thing nowadays, man. But um, I keep the gear alive, man. I think plugins can never match up to gear, in my opinion. They come close, like no, nah, they, they. I mean, some they, of them, like like the Universal Audio stuff's getting there, you know. But, uh, no, I agree. The lunar, the thing I don't like about the Universal Audio stuff is it lacks low end, if you notice, and stuff. Like bit. it has a it, they it lacks low end. Like they give a width where everything sounds big, <laughs> but the low end is never as big as the uh, gear. Like once you run it through the gear and you start pushing it, that's when you start hearing it and everything. Right. You know, for real, you start hearing it. And then all these companies I'm talking about, the gear is not that expensive. It's not like you're buying a fucking Universal Audio for three thousand dollar la2a like right. these gear is very affordable man i mean we talking like for a tape emulator we talking like 750 for a tape emulator you know what right. i'm saying that's like two plugins from universal audio right and stuff and uh yeah you know like honestly that's like two plugins right so and then even with the west audio stuff we talking like 1500 that's like four plugins from universal audio so it's like instead of buying four plugins let me just save up that money and get a piece of gear right and just over, you know, the course of 20 years, you've accumulated what you have, which is, from what I've seen, a pretty dope setup. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. I've actually had more than this, man, but I sold off a lot of stuff that I wasn't using and everything else. So now I'm just getting stuff that I personally would use every single day. What uh, What's your vocal chain like? Like at, uh, at... Uh, Actually, my vocal chain just switched up. Check this out. Hold on a second. Oh, shit. This is going. This is going back to the wonderful people of Universal Audio because my 1176 side broke oh, and everything. Man. So they're gonna be yeah, they're gonna be sending me another one and everything. I think it got broken shipping, honestly, bro. But this piece right here, everybody, if you want to be a producer or a, a, um, a vocal, like you want to be a rapper and you want some dope vocals, this piece right here is a monster. 6176, like, right? The 6176, this is all you need right here, yo. Just yeah. This one piece. It's and underrated, really. You're... It's so dope, man. It's so dope, dude. And uh, what I usually do is I switch out the tubes. So, hold on. Is that white thing again? Yeah. I switch out the tubes, you feel what I'm saying? To yeah. make it uh, sound the way I want and everything, yo. But right now, since that's going back to the store, I have the uh, the Neve 1073 going into an LA-2A. Nice. That's actually... Yeah, so that's uh, that, that's actually the same uh, signal chain they got up at uh, uh, Magic Ninja. Oh really? Yeah. yeah what are well, they, they, well, they there, got man? they got a, they got a Neve, they got a Neve clone actually. It's it's a Vintech. Um, but, oh, they got the Vintech. Yeah, I yeah. know that guy. I know the guy who uh, owns that company. They're solid though. They're solid. Yeah, Vintech um, is dope. Vintech's but, been around. They got a big low end, man. Vintech's got a fat ass low end. Yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to be giving away all their Magic Ninja secrets, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a Neve clone going into the LA two A and then uh, into Pro Tools HD, obviously. Um, yeah. But uh, and then they got like a, a super sweet manly mic that they're using, um, like the reference, you know. That's what I have. Oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah, I've got the same one. Actually, <laughs> you should that... recommend to them since they got the reference. Tell them to switch out the tube. Tell yeah. them to pull a muddle, a mullard in there. If they put a mullard tube in there, it'll sound ten times better. Yeah, 
I, I believe it. I believe it. Tubes are everything, man, because it's, you know, you can make or break it, you know? Yo, what else they got in there gear-wise? I mean, they're mostly tracking vocals. That's really it. <laughs> you know, like, they're not, yeah. you know, the, the, the production gets outsourced more or less, so... Um, you know they have a couple keyboards but nothing nothing crazy in there and uh but yeah it's it's mostly uh that's mostly it as far as the signal saying yeah the ventec is dope man i like the ventec i was gonna buy a ventec a while ago when they first started coming out ventec's been around for a minute and stuff man then you got you got like a couple different versions of the ventec you have the 1073 the 1084 and then yeah. you got a uh they got an, one an of actual clone of it like they have a, a one-to-one i forgot which one it is uh, the one they've got is a five five hundred series. Um, they got like oh, they got seventy three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they got the five hundred. Yeah. They got three of those actually because they got um they got it for their uh like if they want to put a keyboard or something too. So, um, but nice. anyway, I just gave That's away so a good. ton of information. I probably George is probably gonna be calling me like, what the fuck are you doing? Why did you, you do that? <laughs> yeah. Yo, I put. We got talking about if... gear, George. I'm sorry, man. Dude, if they want to go with the 500 series wrong, man, is like I'm pretty sure they're stuck in there. You know what I'm saying? They they want to go with that, and that's it. But if they did want to venture out, man, there's definitely other dope options in that same price range. That's uh, really good and stuff, man, for real and everything. But um, I always thought the Ventec rack mount was better than their 500 series. Really? I thought the Ventec 500 series sounded small compared to their rack mount. Yeah, I haven't I haven't compared them, but yeah, I yeah. mean they get a pretty decent result out of it, you know. So. No, I'm pretty sure they do. I was just saying in general, like tech-wise, yeah, the, I've I've seen their 573s. I've definitely seen that and everything because I was looking at those a while ago. But um, right. yeah, man, I just went with the I got the BAE ones, the BAE 1073. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've seen those. Those are beasts, man. Those nah, are really good. Those are like about. one to ones. Right. Yeah, those are really like one to ones. Those are really good. But <clears throat> my go-to preamp is the 6176 out of all of those. Really? Yeah, so you, I like you, it better than the Neve. And you, better than running the LA2A as well? Or do you run that in, yeah. in addition? No, I would like, me personally, I think the um, tracking vocals, the 6176 is all you need. I personally think it's better than the Neve, in my opinion. That's my taste, though. See, I like that vintage 1994 cassette tape sound. So right. for me, it, it works perfectly. If you're trying to go, I mean, you can even go radio on it, too. I mean, I like it. And so I like the 6176, but the Neve is the industry standard, quote unquote. So it's like, that's like the industry standard of every studio you go to is to have a Neve going into a CL1B or LA2A with a reference mic. Right. Or U87. Yeah. That's my signal chain, U87 into the, uh, I have the Avid HD Omni. I'm using the, nice. the, the onboard preamp with that. And then I run the insert out to LA2A and then back in. So. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. So I mix with the LA2As. <clears throat> but this new the new joint I just posted I mixed with the uh, 1176 this time right. and everything I started mixing with that instead now I saw somebody do it and I was like damn I want to try that out so I um yeah man once this goes back I got to give me another 1176 now and everything you know like I don't even have one no more are they going to fix it and send it back or what no I'm actually going to send this one back and just go with another brand man and stuff for real for right now and then come back to it later on gotcha. I think they had a bad batch or something man I have no clue and stuff, yo. So I'm waiting for them to get this together, and then they'll, uh, I'll go with another brand, and I'll come back and get this one next month. Right, right. Well, that's stuff, dope. Real, but that was, that was dope yeah. talking gear, though, man. Uh, you, you obviously know your shit. Nah, I appreciate it, man. I definitely appreciate it, man. I'm gonna tell you what I recommend for you to get, though, man. If you're trying to do production and shit, I say get some Poltex, man. I think Poltex on drums is like one of the illest things ever. I think it's better than the Neve, in my opinion. I've right. used the Neve the other day on drums. And um, they were cool, but I thought the Poltex were more punchy, in my opinion. They didn't have that muddy low end. You feel what I'm saying? Where the knees got like a, a their low end is a little bit muddy, like right. a tiny bit. But I thought the Poltex were nice and punchy and dope. Hey, when I get some bread, <laughs> maybe I'll, no, maybe I'll check you, that bro. up, you know? I mean, me personally, like, you know, I mix mostly in the box, you know, just because. That's good, yeah. I mean, I have plugins for days, like legit, but uh, I need to be able to come back and fuck with it a week later, you know, and not have to dial up a bunch of shit, you know. I'm call me lazy, but uh, it's just. No, weird. you're not lazy, dude. <laughs> I feel the same way. And because of that, you should check out the West Audio stuff. The West Audio stuff has the analog circuitry with a digital face, meaning. Right. Everything in there is 100% analog and it's got full recall on the plugin. So basically oh, nice. you're controlling you're controlling the gear from your Pro Tools. So you open it up as a plugin, 
and you make all your changes and as you're doing that the gear is moving that's the shit that sounds yeah, right so up i would check alley, into that man. yeah and they have the poltech they have the ssl they have the uh what i have here i have right now i'm in front of me i have the ssl i have their four band eq they have a poltech they have 1176 they have all of that right nice i'm definitely gonna yeah, have to so check that dope, out man dude if well, i'm using it <laughs> it's dope trust me yeah <laughs> right right I'm and not using no bullshit, man. You get you get you getting that wipe that white thing again, man. It's like I'm wiping a fucking nail. <laughs> That's so clean. weird, man. Why is it doing that? stuff for real. That's weird. I don't know. That's Maybe weird. I'm trying to go to the other side and everything. It's trying to snatch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't, I don't. I hope we didn't bore all the fans with talk about gear for a half an hour, because <laughs> uh, you know they may not know what the fuck we're talking about. But uh, I feel you, bro, and stuff. For but, but but you know a lot you know of a lot of underground cats watch the show too, you know. So they might be they might be yeah. like hell yeah, that's what you know. What were you gonna say? No, I said I feel you on that one. But this is how the music is made. So if you really want to know behind the scenes, this is this is how your favorite records are made. You feel what I'm trying to say? Right. Like, this is how your favorite records are really made. Like this is somebody's like favorite guitar or favorite drum. Like I'm gonna be honest with you, what bores me is guitars. Like when yeah. people start going in guitars, that shit puts me to sleep and everything, yo, for real. Like some people are real passionate about the guitars and the cabs and stuff and that that's what bores me. Tune tune in the drum heads. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And stuff for real. I'm, but uh I'm back like... to the music, man. Like I said, man, I got the Donnie Darko album I'm working on right now. Uh we're finishing that up. I'm doing all the production on that. And um yeah, I'm using my SP twelve hundred and one thousand for most of that rest of that project because uh my 1000, one of the channels went out on me, so I'm actually had to switch over to an SP1200. You gotta do what you gotta which do. Which is a legendary, you know what I'm saying? Legendary drum machine, for those who don't know. So uh, tell me this, man. Um, never so deep. Let's talk about uh, the record label a little bit, man. Um, th this is your brainchild, right? This is my brainchild, man. I've had it since I've been like 16, 17. Right. And you have you have a, a bit of a roster going, too. Like a lot of these guys you're talking about are on Never So Deep, right? Yeah, a lot of these guys I'm talking about is definitely on Never So Deep. <laughs> what we do now in 2019 is um, we do more projects now. So artist-wise, I'm only messing with a handful of artists and not cut, the, not close the door after that. Not negatively, just I just don't have time. So I, what I do is I'll, I'll have a handful of artists that I work with, and then everything else after that is this production projects. Meaning like if I do a project with a certain artist, it's a production project. So it's like a one-off. So we do that project. You know what I'm saying? We get it done, then we move on to the next project. Like me personally, like to sign an artist and to and all that is just a lot of work, man. And so to right. me personally, it's like I like doing it the DJ, the quote unquote DJ premiere way, where you work on a project with an artist, you get it done, then you move on to the next thing. You feel what I'm trying to say? Right. And um, that's how we do it now in 2019. But back in the days, we were doing the signing thing where we would sign an artist, work with the artist, build the artist up and all that. But uh yeah, nowadays it's like nah. I'd rather it's more of a collaborative and, effort than yeah i like to do collaborative albums more now than anything you feel what i'm saying and right now i'm more excited about the darko album uh than my own project honestly and stuff and i'm like i'm happy for all the other past stuff but this darko project is coming out dope man it's coming out really the way i wanted it to and how is it going to be different from what you've done in the past um i have more experience this time man and stuff when it comes to mixing and uh and mastering and production so I feel that I can, um, I think before I was going off of pure talent with no type of um, knowledge on things, where now I have the knowledge and pure talent. So now I feel that this new album is gonna be even better. Like for people who like Pull the Fucking Trigger, which is my group, my other group, Pull the Fucking Trigger, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's me, Darko, and Apollo Valdez. So Apollo just dropped his album that I fully produced from front to back. That was a banging ass album. That's the video you just played. Yeah. Um, if you like that project, then you'll love the Darko project because it's even harder. Like it's the beats are harder. Like you found what I'm trying to say, like we're going for a different route. And even the new single we have, London, is like one of the best. And I think for those who's been following me forever. Like you gotta say, like I have a like I put it this way, and I'm not even trying to be like that. It's to explain to people who are new to me. I have what you call a cult fan base. You feel what I'm saying? So I have right. people who've been following me from super back in the days to people who've been following me from the middle on. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I have a fan right. base for each project. So I have people who only like the ghetto metal shit. And I have people who only like the street shit. And I have people who only like another thing. You feel what I'm saying? So they only... That's how my fans basically work. And then I have fans who like it all. You know what I'm saying? There might be some that only know you as DJ Bless. Exactly. Like, I had somebody the other day. I was in... The, no bullshit, man. I was in this restaurant the other day getting some food. And the dude... um 
somehow we started talking about music. I don't know how it came up. And I was like, yeah, man, follow me on Instagram. And uh, he looked at it and he said, damn, you're DJ Bless? Like, no shit. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, he's known me. He said that he knew my music back in high school. You feel what I'm trying to say? So right. I, I've lived different lives, man. I feel like I've lived a, a, in my career. I've lived different lives throughout the music. You feel what I'm saying? So I have fan bases for those periods of time in their life. Right. That's the shit, man. I mean, you you pretty much, from what I've seen and, and heard and just talking to you tonight, I mean, you've pretty much done it all from, you know, the, the artist, DJ, producer, engineer, you know, collaborative guy, sing, solo guy, like you've done everything. Like what, what have you yeah. not done? I mean, is there, is there um, like a dream collab that you, you or somebody that, uh, that you would just haven't had a chance to work with, whether it be the underground or mainstream that you, you want to, you want to work with or somebody that's on your radar? Um, somebody that's on my radar, man. I always keep on bringing up the same name for the past couple of years, but it, it, for some reason, never comes through. I don't know why. Uh, me and Vinny Paz, I would like to produce oh him. Because I think that, uh, I think Vinny would sound way better on my piece than he does on the peoples he's rocking with now. <laughs> like, you feel what I'm saying? And right. stuff for real. Like, I think they're cool, but I'm not. Like, it's starting to sound the same. It's starting to sound repetitive. Like, you feel what I'm trying to say? So I think a guy like me can take it to another level. You feel what I'm saying? That would, be, a, that would be dope, man. You should reach out to him if you haven't already, man, because he's Well, we spoke a, a couple MC. times back in the days. Yeah, we spoke a couple times and everything. It just, it just didn't fall through. Like, we spoke a couple times. But um, we got the same, like how, like how you said you know me, we have the same mutual people. So um, we might see what's good, man. You never know. Whatever God wills, we'll see what's good. You never know, man. So what uh, did you... Did you go over the whole roster for Never So Deep? It, Apollo Valdez, Donnie Darko, you obviously. Who, who else do we got? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got, um, shit, we got Danny Die Rich, which is out of Cali. And um, who else we got? We got our Rhythm Writers. And then um, that's it for right now, man. I, like, our roster's pretty small right now, man, because I wanted it that way. Like, right. you feel what I'm saying? Because right. with a big roster, is, is too much, man, and stuff. And I'm pretty sure people like, uh, George and Twisted can can totally sympathize with me on that. When you have like a huge roster, I mean that's a lot of phone calls getting to your phone of when my album's coming out, when are we gonna be doing shit? Like you feel what I'm trying to say? Like there's only so much you can take of that and everything. So for me, I've learned throughout the years have a small roster of people you love to work with and you enjoy working with. So this way it doesn't seem like work. You enjoy working with them, you get stuff done, and then all your outside stuff you do one-offs with. You feel what I'm saying? So basically you you produce the project. And, uh, and that's it. You produce the project and you move on to the next one. If y'all feel like I want to do another one, you do another one. Right. Speaking of, uh, um, you know, Magic Ninja, uh, you've been working with Lex a little bit too, right? Yes, me and Lex got a project coming out. I did like two tracks with Lex already, you feel what I'm saying? So we yeah. did like two joints and uh, I produced. And, uh, there was, yeah, there was, we there was got... one on that new uh, Dark Midnight record, right? Yeah, actually, yeah, that's the third one. You're right. It yeah. shows one on Dark Midnight. Yeah, you're right. And stuff. It shows one on there. And stuff he's on. I forgot he's on that one. He's on a Darko album too. He's on a song called uh, Raw. That's Beast, man. And um, that song is really hard, man. The beat, the, the lyrics, everything is uh, it came together beautifully, man. So he's on that too, and everything. Lex is a very underrated rapper, man. I think that um, I think he doesn't get the I think he doesn't get the push like he. It's all for him. He's so lyrical that it's all about production. Like certain guys are so lyrical that they need the right beats to take them to a different plateau. You feel what I'm yeah. trying to say? Because we're in that type of era now to where you just can't put out a fucking like a, a acapella album or you can't just rap on anything. Like you get what I'm trying to say? Because yeah. what it does is it doesn't really showcase who you are. So for a guy like Lex, I mean, to me, it's very production heavy. Like that, he's a rapper who's definitely needs like a, a me or a DJ Premier or some of that nature like you feel what i'm saying because his lyrics are, he's too lyric he's real lyrical like he needs somebody to bring it out even more like you get what i'm trying to say like he's yeah he's one of the elite he's one of the elite lyricists out there in my opinion like he's really that fucking good he is and stuff, yo. and it's, he's really that good but a guy like him like i said man, damn that white shit again a guy like him man is like um it's production heavy man he's very production heavy like the right beat can take his career to another level. Like, right. you feel what I'm saying? It's all about the right beat and the right song. And so, because he's so, like, like I said, man, he's one of the best lyricists I've heard in a long time. Hey. And stuff, yo. And he's so raw with it, man. Like, the guy's got energy. He's got, like, he's beast, man. He's a beast dude, man. And stuff. I just wish he got more recognition for his for his rhymes, man, among the elite guys. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And so, but it's all politics, man. That's another thing I got to let all y'all know, man. A lot of these people who you 
who we all say is underrated or we should hear more of. It's politics behind all that shit, man. It's a lot of fucking politics, dude, and stuff. You feel what I'm trying to say? It's all right. about who you know and who can get you in the right position to get the right, you know what I'm saying, get the right uh, people to look at you and, and your voice and stuff. So that's just my opinion on it. But I think he's dope as shit. Indeed. I mean, yeah, Lex is he's one of the best in the underground, and honestly, he deserves to be up there with some of the more mainstream cats really i mean he, he's at that he, <laughs> i agree he's at that level you know um, no of, i totally of, of agree. I think Lex is totally at that level yeah for sure um so you got a couple more tracks coming out with him uh uh i had a, a message from mcnasty a while ago um he told me to ask you uh when are you gonna send him those beats oh. Oh, yeah, I do got to send up some joints, man. I'm, you know what it is, man? <laughs> I'm a one-man army. So yeah. a lot of times, man, yo, I just be like, all the beats I have will be taken within like a night. But no, I definitely got to get him some more beats, man, hands down, because I love working with him. He always brings out my beats to the right way and stuff. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he always brings it out in the most illest way. For sure. Um, do you have any, uh, any plans to work with Psycho again in the future, man? I mean, we spoke here and there, man, and stuff. It's, the vibe got to be right, though, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I love Psycho to death, man, but the vibe got to be right with that dude, man. Because that's my nigga, and I love him to death, and I stick up for him every which way, but the vibe got to be on point. You feel what I'm saying? Like, the vibe between me and him got to be 100%. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And we can do something. Right. I had a, um, another question that got sent in. Um, what were the initial reactions to the August Underground and Black Sunday albums uh, since they were very brutal and unapologetic releases. They're classics, man. I seen August Underground going for $1,500 on fucking Amazon one day. Right. They're classic fucking albums. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, those were albums that really captured my emotion at that time. I would say Black Sunday more than anything because I thought Black Sunday was more closer to my heart. Uh, I thought August Underground was dope. It's a really fucking really good album. I thought that was a better put together album, in my opinion. I thought, I thought Black Sunday content-wise was more closer to my heart, and I thought August Underground was a really good all-around, put-together production album, and the response on that has been, to this day, people still beg me for those albums. Like, you feel what I'm trying to say? Like, those are, like, the classic albums. And that's what I was saying. I got classic projects, man. Like, hands down, between that, Cycle to Snuff Reels, Emotional Disorders, like, all of those, those are classic projects. For sure. Did you have, uh, was the initial reaction though from like when you first put them out, did people get it? I guess I. I Hell yeah. I, I think that, that was an understatement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they got it, dude. That, shit, that's why we're talking right now. Right, <laughs> right, right, it, right, right, right. I think that's what he was asking though. That's why I was trying to. Yeah, he, he, no, they got it, dude. Got it is an understatement, yo. That shit blew me up throughout the whole world. People don't speak English know my name. <laughs> Oh man, somebody in the chat was saying uh, Sutter Kane is my shit. I told him my first car while blaring August Underground. See, there you go. I'm sorry you told your car. That's fucking sucks. The Gear God, my dude Sutter Kane. Uh, Kane is the genius producer. Uh, they're giving I appreciate you, they're, all they're, of they're giving y'all props in there, man. Yeah, tell them I appreciate all of them, man. There's more music to come, man, and stuff for real. I'm gonna stop being a uh, secluded hermit and start uh being more open and talking to things and getting things done i'd right. be so secluded in my studio man that days just go by and i just like completely just work 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 right right well, look man we got about an hour in man you want to take a little break and uh i could spin another one of these videos and uh maybe come back and take some phone calls yeah that's cool man let's make it happen all right man cool um so uh, what was this other video you sent me man you want to you want to uh prop it up real quick uh, Which one, the Dark Murder? Uh, I think that's the one. Yeah, Dark Murder, yeah. Yeah, Dark Murder's sick, man. That shit was shot in Germany when I went to Germany. That was shot there. It's a beast album. And this man. is and you and Apollo song. Valdez, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and mind you, I directed all these videos and edited all these videos and shot these videos. I'm also a filmmaker. Oh, shit. Are you doing any big films or just music videos or what? Yeah, we're working on movies and everything now. We're working on a ton of stuff. That's why I said in August I could talk more about things. Oh, shit. But for right now, yeah, man. All these music videos you see coming out Never So Deep is all produced. And nine times, uh, I say 90% of them I've directed, shot, edited, color corrected, all of that. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, this shit looks dope. I mean, it looks professional. What are you What are you uh, filming on, camera-wise? Uh, Canon 5D Mark IV. And um, I use, like, uh, Canon L lenses, man. Like, I got, like, a 35mm L Mark II. 
1.4, a 50, 1.2, and an 85. And what stuff, you, yeah. So. What, what are you chopping with? Media Composer or Final Cut? Nah, actually, I use a Final Cut, man. Okay. Yeah, that's what yeah, I use. Yeah, Final Cut X? That's what I use too, so, yeah. Yeah, I love it, man. Final Cut X is dope. I used to use Sony Vegas, like Black Tar Heroin and all that shit. <clears throat> I don't know if you saw that music video. Like, that was Sony Vegas. Right, right. But yeah. yeah see, I uh, forgot about Black Tar Heroin. Black Tar Heroin was another classic record that everybody knows. Right, right. Hey, you you got a lot. <laughs> you know, there's a lot. There's, you did. You, you feel know what I'm saying? You know, it's funny, man. I don't want to put on my blast or anything, man. But, like, you know, you look at guys like Twisted, you know. They've made so much music that, like, they'll hear a track and, like, what the fuck record was this? You know? Dude, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we sound dope, Dude, I've been you know? There. What what record is this? You know? It's, it's funny to me because, like, it'd be, like, Dude, I've just been a there. classic, classic track. And, like, it's just, like... They don't do it live, so they're not thinking about it all the time. You know what I mean? Nah, I totally feel. I've been in, I've I've been around people who have my music, who've been following it, and uh, they'll play something, and I'm like, damn, who's that? That's you. I'm like, damn, when did I record that shit? Like, that shit hard as hell. Right. Like, I'll forget about a beat or something like they had. I'm like, damn, that shit hard. Right. All right, man. Well, look, we'll play this video. Um, I might spin one other one, and then um, we'll we'll come back. We'll take some phone calls and. Uh, be more with uh, Sutter Kane, man. Word. On Wicked 101. And we're back on Wicked 101. And I got my homie Sutter Kane still in the building. Still here, making it happen. And uh, if you want to call in and chop it up with us, uh, we got the phone lines open. It's 734-430-0549. Um, so, yeah, call in. Get your questions asked answered answered and asked asked and answered uh but yeah man we got the phone lines open kick it with us man um yeah so i was gonna talk about too about um kind of a lot of people want to notice and i get access a lot like what's the difference between the major stuff like major labels and underground you found i get that access right. a lot and stuff yo and i uh, definitely want to get that across before i forget is that um when i was doing august underground and black sunday i was working at capitol like you feel what i'm saying like i was already over there working and stuff and what i noticed is that with the underground you have way more freedom than with the majors the majors pay really good but your freedom is really taking a lot like you found trying to say like right. kind of they pick and choose what they feel is good you found saying what they feel is dope to where with your underground you could do what you want to do when you want to do it how you want to do it and put it out how you want to do it and take right. a chance where right. in, in the buildings you have to convince somebody that shit. you found saying so that was where the whole set of cane thing came about, man. I was like, I just wanted to have my freedom to do what I wanted to do. Like, you feel what I'm saying? And, and rock it like that. So I just think now in 2019, man, with all the distribution that's out here now, that if you're a dope artist or anything, man, as long as you make music that you personally like, that uh, people will listen, man. Like, hands down. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um what uh you, you talked about some of the projects you got going on um are there any other like collabs kind of hanging out in the works or anybody that uh um that you you're, you're planning to work with that's not uh not like uh paulo Vadez and you know your your crew you know yeah no nah, for chance down man um there's a lot of stuff i'm working on right now man and stuff for real like uh, a lot of overseas stuff i'm working with out of russia germany and stuff like that man i'm working with a lot of stuff out there that i can talk about later on but collaborative wise um yo i'm gonna be honest with you man my main focus right now is finishing up this darko album right i've been getting asked about this album for about two years like when is the new darko album coming out so that's like my main focus right now is finishing up that album then after that work on my album so we, we talked about um like a couple of your uh hip-hop influences um and we kind of glossed over some of your uh, your metal influences, um, but what do you think? Uh, if there was like one record from both genres that influenced you the most, what, what do you think they would be? Oh man, I'd say um, Killer Priest, Heavy Mental of hip hop, and I would say of metal, I would say Faith No More's Epic album. I bought that album in 1990, I think it was, or 1989. I was, I knew I was in elementary school when I bought that album. That album has the illest breaks for metal samples. It's ridiculous. Like that album is like, I'm surprised that samples haven't been like pillaged from that album. Like it's really a dope album. So it uh, looks like we got a caller. Uh, caller, you're live on the air. Uh, what's your name? Where you calling from? Yeah, yeah, what's happening, baby? My name is Kenneth. How you feeling, brother? 
Oh man, uh, you know we, we, we're keeping it real. We're we're moving forward and uh, talking about Sutter Kane, man. What's going down? Yo, Adam Kane, man. You know, I, I remember him as DJ Plus, man. When he uh, when he was doing those projects, man. You know, why did he he leave the, the majors, man? You know what I mean? And, and came back to the underground, man. Was that his was that his decision? Was the label's decision? You know what I'm saying to you? So a lot of cats trying to get to the majors, you know. And Kane brought that sound, man. That was uh, different, you know what I mean, uh, and brought it back down home. Could you could you hear that, uh, Sutter King? Yeah, yeah, I heard it and stuff, man. I I left the majors, man, because it was bullshit. It was they they control everything, like, and I honestly didn't leave. I still do an ass of business over there. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like, I kind of fluctuate between both. But the whole point is, man, being independent is the best freedom you can fucking possibly have and everything, being independent, man. Like, to be able to call your own shots, put out your own records, and get stuff done, man, is a freedom that's unheard of. You feel what I'm saying? Most people in the majors, if you know how to maneuver it the way I do, then you'll have fun and enjoy yourself. But if you're a, a upcoming producer and you influenced by, like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, you don't have that type of influence yet, man, they will control the fuck out of you and everything. You know, they'll tell you when to do it, how to do it, what to do it. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like, you might have a dope-ass idea, and those fuckers will shut that shit down if it don't fix with their uh, with their criteria and what they're doing. So for me, fluctuating between both, I, uh, I felt that was better, is to go ahead, establish Never So Deep, use the money I make from the majors to fund Never So Deep, and then get it popping that way. You feel what I'm saying? So all the money I made with the majors, which was a lot, no, not trying to brag, you know what I'm saying? That's what funded my company and stuff to make me take chances like that. Like I could take a chance like that and say, okay, I'm gonna put out an August Underground. I could put out an agency 1994. And that was the first album I put out. And I think that was 2003, often never so deep, that I took a chance with was agency 1994. And for those who've been following me, know that those two albums are classics. Like you feel what I'm saying? The first one and the second one, Days of Our Lives and Real Life is as Dope as the Movies are, are classic albums. So I took the money I made from that to fund all the projects I had were never so deep. You feel what I'm trying to say? And to get that popping. So I fluctuate between both. And to this day, I fluctuate between both. Like literally, to this day, I'm still fluctuating in the buildings. I'm still taking care of shit. You feel what I'm saying? But I just don't brag. I don't I don't post about it and stuff, yo. But there's right. a ton of shit I'm doing. And that's why I say when all this comes, you're gonna hear a fucking announcement that is gonna shut everything down when people are gonna be like, oh shit, like this dude, he's in a whole class of his own. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like this, man. A person like me, I feel like I look at myself as a chameleon, man. I could fluctuate in any environment of entertainment when it comes to film, music, industry, underground, fucking sub underground, left underground. I don't give a fuck what goddamn section it is. I can know how to I know how to maneuver in there and get it popping. Damn, that white thing's coming again. I know how to maneuver in there and get it popping. You feel what I'm saying? It's because I believe in my talent and I know that what I do is fucking dope. Like you feel what I'm trying to say? So that's why I personally stopped dealing with them a lot and stuff, yo, as far as like putting out a lot of records with them. I started taking those same beats and saying, instead of me putting it to here, I could put it to my own shit and make it even bigger. Well, that was a good question, man. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to ask or say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I saw a man that he works with uh, Whitney Goldstein and, and uh, Naeem Ali. Tell, tell us about that, man. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that those are the those are the people that signed the deals. I mean, what's going on with that? I mean, we still got stuff going on right now. Right now, Naeem Ali and Wendy Goldstein are head of uh, Warner Brothers Music Group and stuff. They're the head of there. So, uh, one of actually Naeem Ali wanted to know what do I want and stuff, and I didn't have an answer. Like you found, what I'm trying to say, like he wants to know what do I want for uh, to to go over to Warner Brothers. I don't have an answer right now. Like you found, what I'm saying I'm doing what I'm doing now. We're never so deep, so well that. I don't have an answer. You feel what I'm saying? So what I do, like I said, man, I just fluctuate between both. If I see something that's dope over there that I want, I go get it. If not, then I stay where I'm at. No. Okay. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right. Peace, King. All right, man. Thanks Peace. for calling in, man. Damn. I mean, that, that, that dude obviously was uh, a big fan and knew, uh, and knew, the, knew his shit. Yeah, I told you, man. I got guys from back in the days who know it to this day, man. Who've been following me for a long time and know what time it is, man. But like I said, man, that's my opinion on the difference between the majors and the underground, man. If you can stay, if you can stay independent and you got a good funding to get it done, I say go that route. Right. And um, if if you give me a second here, um, I want to show uh, I want to show the the viewers um, 
the uh, the album you, you just did, the uh, the Dark Midnight cover, because you, you gave me an ad to throw up, um, so I want to do that real Oh, quick. yeah, Dark Midnight? Yeah, yeah, give me one second, and I can do that. I want to press the wrong button here. There we go. Okay. Um, hold on one second. I got to take you off the screen for a second. People can still hear you, though. Um so yeah, this is the uh, the album uh, that you just you just put out. How long ago was that? It's like a month or two ago, right? Yeah, I think we put it out on uh, April 29th. <laughs> That's when we dropped that album. That's the Southern King and the Palo Valdez album. A fucking dope ass album, man. It's a really good album. It goes Plus the hard, artwork man. too, man. The artwork is yeah, that cover is really good, man. Uh, if y'all want to get some like graphics, man, check out my homegirl Hip Hop Junkie on uh, Instagram. She did that cover. She's done a lot of our covers, man, and stuff from Pull the Fucking Trigger on. Like anything from Pull the Fucking Trigger on, she's done and stuff, yo. Uh, she runs one of the top Instagram blog sites for hip hop, so definitely check her out. It's a uh, Hip Hop Junkie. Yeah, I just wanted to I just wanted to show that real quick because uh, you know, well, I'll, I mean, we're obviously getting toward the end here, but um, I just yeah, wanted, definitely, I man. just kind of wanted to throw that up there while we were talking about it. Um, so what else? Uh, what uh, is there anything else you want to pl- plug or push, man? While we're while we're wrapping up here? Yeah, definitely, man. Yo, follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active at. Yo, it's Sutter Kane N S D S U T T E R K A I N N S D. Follow me on there, yo, on Instagram, and um, I'm going to be posting a lot about gear, a ton of stuff about gear, production. I'm about to really get heavy into the gear scene now, man, and stuff. I'm about to really put my foot in there and get heavy into the gear scene and start posting about dope gear for people to buy and how I get my production the way it sounds and dope drum machines and stuff like that, man. So definitely follow me on there. And then um, <clears throat> we're going to be shooting videos. I'm going to start showing what cameras I use, why I use a certain camera, why I use a certain lens. Like, I'm going to be really showing a lot, man, but it's not tutorials. It's just basically you just following me around, sh- uh, showing you how I do it. You feel what I'm trying to say? Right. Like, it's a difference and stuff. I'm showing you how I, how I put stuff out and why I choose this and why I choose that and everything. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's why my new passion is that really is with... uh is with gear and film, man. A lot of film and stuff, like with cameras, lenses, um, stuff like that, man. That's where a lot of my passion is at right now. Including mixing, like how you said you was doing the mixing and engineering. Right. Like, um, dude, I'm gonna be real with you, man. I, I prefer mixing over engineering. And so I'm not a fan of engineering, man. You have to be patient for that and stuff, man. Engineering takes a lot of patience. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, like, it, it depends on the artist that I'm working with, you know, like... Very true, man. Like, like if it's somebody you got to report with and you're having a good time, then it, it goes a lot better. Like, I have more fun with it, you know, but, like, if it's somebody that you're not really feeling and they're just paying you and it's like, you know, whatever, dude, you know what I mean? But, but no, if they're, but, but if they're a dope artist and, you know, you have a report and you're having fun, I, I enjoy it a lot more, so... No, I feel you, man. I just know for me... Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older now. Nowadays, engineering is just like, it takes patience, man. Like, even with guys I like, like, it takes patience because I'm like, okay, let's do that again. Or let's let's rock it this way. Like, you feel what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, right. I like mixing. Mixing has been my new, like, because it's, it's you and, and you, the computer and the gear by yourself in a room, and you can just listen to the, to the music all day and just mix. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, right. you're in your own zone. Right. I feel you. Was there anything else uh, you wanted to plug, man, while we're... Uh... Yeah, man. This uh, NeverSoDeepRecords.com, uh, Sutter Kane NSD. Right Follow here. me on YouTube. Um, what is it, YouTube? Uh, YouTube.com, uh, NeverSoDeepRecords. And, uh, yo, I appreciate you, man, and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Plug your stuff. I appreciate you, man, oh, for my, having me my, on here. And, uh, my stuff's been on the screen the whole time, so... Uh, <laughs> don't worry, man. If they just ignored well, there it. There you go. Then I don't know what to tell them, but it's all right there, man. No, I feel you, man. But no, I appreciate everyone, man. Just follow me on Instagram. Now, like I said, man, that's where I post a lot of stuff as on Instagram, one and Facebook. I mean, I post on both, but Instagram is where I really post that. So follow me on there. You got any questions about gear, production, anything, man? Just yo, ask away, man, and stuff, man. Like this is the part I love, man. Like ask away. Any questions you got? Anything? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna follow you uh, as you're doing your production videos and stuff, man. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna keep up and. Uh watch what you got going on and 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 also follow your music and stuff too man because uh holy shit man you got you got some shit thank you man i appreciate it man i definitely appreciate it and i appreciate all the fans i appreciate everybody who's been supporting me since day one like i appreciate all of y'all man let's continue to uh make some dope uh dope things man dope music let's share the music let's get it popping man make some dope stuff man 
If you don't mind, before we sign off, man, I got a couple things I want to plug real quick. Um, yeah, go for it, man. I'm going to take you off the screen for a second. Um, again, they can still hear you. So, uh, coming up on Wicked 101, uh, on the next episode, man, we got my homie uh, Staples making a return. Um, are you hip to Staples, Sutter King? No, nah, I got you. Got to put me on some. Oh my on. God, man, he's 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 a Saginaw, Michigan, uh, wicked shit legend, man. And uh, okay, so uh, and he he's got some dope. He had a a dope new album that came out. And I feel like everybody's sleeping on it, so I'm bringing him back. He was on the very first Wicked 101, and uh, nice. I'm excited to have my boy back. Um, and then after that, um, that's that's in July. And then after that, uh, I got my homie Kung Fu Vampire uh, hanging out uh, in August. So nice. That's gonna be dope. Uh, I also want to plug my buddy uh, Toxic from Troubled Minds. His new album uh, just came out called "I Need Therapy." Um, Troubled Minds is dope, man. I think they, these guys get slept on a lot too, and uh, they're 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 hardcore, you know. Um, and this album right here just came out like a month or so ago, and uh, it's fucking phenomenal, man. These guys keep stepping it up with each release, and. Uh, I'm fucking proud of them for doing that. No. Nice. Um, but uh, let's see here. Um, the other thing I want to plug is uh, my homegirl show, uh, the best friend show. These girls, super super cool chicks. They talk about everything from uh, hip hop, horrorcore to uh, dudes that they're fucking. Um, but uh, <laughs> no shit. But super 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 cool chicks though, man. It's a good it's a good time. Um, I enjoy the show thoroughly. And it's not just because they're my homegirls either. Um, have you fucked them? No. Oh, okay. No, I, 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 have, I have definitely not. Definitely not. Nope. Nope. Definitely not. He said no quick. <laughs> now, they've been on the show, though, no man. They're, they're, they're good friends of mine. Um, they're friends of the show, for sure. But anyways, <laughs> man, um, I'm going to let you get on with your night, man. Um, I don't got anything else for you. My, my, my iPad died with all my notes, so if I had other questions, good, I, I can't find them. Um, but anyways, man, thank you so much for doing this, man. It was a pleasure. Um, you're super cool, dude, man. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta kick it some more, man. Um, but uh, you're welcome to, to chime in anytime if we got another guest or something, man. Call us in, and you know, you know, Lex has been on here, Psycho's been on here, so uh, if you got something to add, yeah. man, it'd be, it'd be dope. All right, cool, man. Let's make it happen, man. I appreciate all y'all, man. Let's make it rock. All right, man. Well, you have a good night, man. And uh, we'll sign out with uh, uh, American History X featuring Sutter Kane. All right, peace. All right, peace, man.